Hey, Suze. How are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. What How are you, you? What are you doing here, waiting? Well, I'm waiting for a bus. Waiting for a bus? Yeah, I'm waiting for the bus to go into town. Uh, OK. Um, can I just point out something to you? Do you think you're waiting in the right place? Isn't this the bus stop? Well, the last time I looked, this was um, King's Christian Centre in Mould, not the bus stop. Oh. In that case, then, I'm waiting in the wrong place. Oh, OK. Because oh. you didn't look like you were very comfortable waiting. No, I don't like waiting. I can't bide waiting. I'm not a very patient person, really. Aren't you? No. Oh. Are you? Well, you, I think you know the answer to that, don't you? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Les said the other day that he was waiting in, his, in the testimony that he gave the other day. He said he was waiting for such a long time for something to happen. And then it did. So okay. maybe he's a good waiter. Maybe we need to, well, not a waiter, sort of wait, you know, food waiter, but a, a person who's good at waiting. No, maybe we need to learn a lesson from him. Mm. Well, yeah, most of us don't like waiting at all, do we really? I suppose not. No, no. it's quite no. hard to wait for something, especially if you're waiting for something that might be a little bit difficult, like a hospital appointment or, you know, you're waiting for a phone call and that's some going to tell you some news. Some people are waiting for paychecks, aren't they? Some people are waiting for paychecks, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people are waiting for that special letter to arrive through the door or that email to drop into their inbox. Not the letter that says you've won the premium bonds. Yeah, I've been waiting for that one for a long time. I know. Yeah. I've been waiting with you. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't find waiting easy, no. do we? Uh, we tend to like things like to happen when we want them to happen. And waiting can be really hard, especially if what we're waiting for is life changing. Mm, that's right. After Jesus had been raised from the dead, the disciples had to wait for him to give them the promise, uh, Holy Spirit. He promised the Holy Spirit would come, but they had to wait. And I'm sure they found that difficult as well, Jesus just having gone back to heaven. You see, the thing was that Jesus didn't tell them when no. the Holy Spirit would come. He just said that the Holy Spirit would come and they had to wait. wait. Yeah, that's the difficult bit, mm. wasn't it? That's right. So after they'd seen Jesus taken back up to heaven, they went back to Jerusalem where they went up to the upper room and they prayed together. And... Well, on the first day, nothing happened. Do you know what? On the second day, nothing happened either. And on the third day, nothing happened. But they still carried on praying and waiting. And the fourth and the fifth. And the sixth and the seventh and the eighth. Yeah, nine. And then the tenth day arrived and something happened. And the Bible says this in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Amazing. It is amazing. Amazing. Isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. You know, we're really glad to be with you today, and I hope that you haven't been waiting long, but the Holy Spirit has, uh, is, wants to be with you, and uh, he's here with us, and we hope that you and pray that you get a real blessing from the Lord. Isn't that right, sir? That's right. We're celebrating Pentecost Sunday today, mm -hmm. uh, when we remember that amazing event when the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples, and the church, as we know it, was born. And our first song picks up that point, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. I can't remember what it's called, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can, fortunately. I've been waiting a long time for this. It's that great Pentecost hymn, Send the Fire. And uh, so enjoy singing this with us. <laughs> oh God of burning, cleansing flame, send the fire. Your blood brought gift to day we claim, send the fire.
Oh, it's great to share in worship together, isn't it? You know, when we play these amazing children's uh, videos, uh, especially the ones from Saddleback, uh, everybody says, isn't it amazing? When you say, this is Jesus. Ayo! And uh, we've got another one for you today. And this is when God sends the Holy Spirit. So enjoy this one. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, Jesus! They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Well, like Andy said, that was a great retelling of what happened on that first Pentecost day. And we love those little films. And I wondered if you can see what this is meant to represent. Those disciples, those apostles, uh, when the Holy Spirit came on them, they were enabled to speak in different languages. And this is from the entrance porch of our church. And it says, welcome in a number of different languages. Now, I see three languages that I know on there. If anybody is watching and they can do more than three, if you'd like to let us know, there might be a prize in it. So how many languages could you see welcoming in that, on that particular poster? Now, I've got a cake here because we think of today as being the birthday of the church. So my cake has 40 candles on it. I'm not going to ask you to count them to make sure, but I'm telling you that's got 40 candles on it. And it's quite a big cake, isn't it? Imagine if this is the birthday of the church, a cake that was big enough for approximately 2,000 candles. 
How big would that be? Sandra would have to have a much bigger oven to make a tray bake to take all those candles, believe me. But here's my cake with 40 candles on. 2,000 years ago, the church was born. Not the building, but the people who went to take the message. And the message is still the same. And we in this building that we're in now, King's Christian Centre, the message has been going out from here since 1828, when our building was finished. And there were 2,000 people in here on the first Sunday, the first service. Can you imagine it? It must have been absolutely packed to the gunnels with people. So 1828, the building, people in here, the church was still carried on. Our church, King's Christian Centre, started in 1993. Not in this building, but a group of people met together in mould and formed themselves into a church, a fellowship of believers that was called King's Christian Centre. And it's carried on to today. So we came into this building, before me and Andy were around, in the year 2000. And there's been Christian worship in here, in this church, for almost 200 years. And in, I think in 2028, we will have a big cake. And I'd like to think it was big enough to have 200 candles on it. So Sandra, get that arger. You might need a bigger oven. So the worship has carried on. The message has carried on the same. Exactly the same message that was given to the, whole, to the apostles when the Holy Spirit came on them almost 2,000 years ago hasn't changed at all. Repent, believe, be baptised, and you will know Jesus. He died for the, the people then. He died for the people now. And just have to make sure that you know Jesus. That's really important. That today you could know new birth. It could be your Christian birthday today, if this is the day that you first accept Jesus to be your saviour. So I'm not going to light the candles. We're, I'm going to light them tomorrow at our youth event and we will enjoy this cake. I might burn my finger though, 40 candles, but it'll be good. Holy Spirit,
Well, it's a great joy and uh, a privilege to welcome Kim to come and bring God's word to us today. So uh, if you'd like to bow your heads with me and uh, I'll pray for Kim and then she'll uh, share God's word with us. So let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that you are with us. Thank you so much that you are for us. Thank you, Lord, so much that you are uh, our greatest uh, advocate before the Father in heaven. And um, Lord, thank you that you have sent your spirit. Even though you went away, you had to go away so that you could send the Holy Spirit. And we're so glad that you sent the Holy Spirit because without him, we would have no power, we would have nothing. And uh, really all of our faith would be in vain. Um, and so, Lord, we just welcome the Holy Spirit with us as Kim ministers to us. And we pray that she would know that special outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the anointing that, would, that comes upon uh, the one who ministers in the, in the Word of God, uh, in the power of God. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, you would open her mouth. We pray that you would give her um, the very words from heaven that you've already prepared for her. But I pray that even as she's speaking, Lord, she'd have that focus and that attention from heaven that she would even be able to speak the words that you're giving to her right now. And uh, thank you, Lord, that you love to do that. You love to surprise us with all sorts of um, thoughts and ideas that, that come into our heads, Lord, when we're standing up here ministering in the power of the Spirit. So, so bless her abundantly. Pour out your Spirit upon her, Lord. And may we hear the word that you've got for us today. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. What an exciting day. The Feast of Weeks for the Jews, Pentecost for the Greeks and Whitson for some of us. The very word Pentecost stirs up a sense of excitement in my heart. When I was a young girl growing up in Kingswood near Bristol in the good old days, the Whitson Bank Holiday, or WIT as we used to call it, was a time of great celebration. There was immense excitement as the whole of Kingswood Main Road was shut down on the Bank Holiday Monday to allow a great parade to take place. It included local brass bands, the Boys Brigade, the Salvation Army, local scouts, cubs, guides, brownies, and others who marched along playing their drums and trumpets and other instruments led by their flag bearers proudly carrying ornately embroidered tapestries that showed which church or chapel they belonged to. Some of these required at least four strong men to hold them up on poles, they were so huge. It seemed that everyone who lived in the area congregated to line the streets. It was obligatory to buy a flag to wave or a whistle to blow or some other type of noisemaker to cheer everyone along. Churches had been working for months preparing floats to carry messages of biblical significance. And of course, many small children got to ride in the floats too. And it was such fun looking out to see who you, who you knew in the crowds, especially your family. The crowds waved until their arms ached and they cheered until they were hoarse. And the floats themselves were so beautifully decorated with such artistic flair and imagination that they held the crowd in awe. It was also the beginning of summer and we always had new outfits to wear for the occasion. My abiding memory was having brand new white socks to go with my new shoes. And even now I love new socks and shoes, of course. The pubs, of course, did a roaring trade too. Even my nan went to the black horse at the top of her road on Whit Monday. She sat in the lounge bar with her sisters and cousins while the men of the family went to the bar and bought them drinks. That's how it was in those days. There were no women at the bar. I'm not at all convinced that the majority of people who were celebrating on those Whit Mondays actually realised the significance of the day that they were celebrating. I asked my mum while I was writing this if she remembered what it was all about. And she said, oh yes, it was such an exciting day about all the churches and the people in the area getting together. Well, she got that bit right, but she couldn't tell me the purpose behind it. She did say though that they came from far and wide. And if we wind back time about 2000 years, this festival was known as the Jewish Feast of Weeks, otherwise known as 
and if I get this wrong, I apologize, Shavuot, which was 50 days or seven weeks after Passover, which when Jesus of Nazareth had been crucified by the Jews on the day Passover started. That was quite a coup for the Pharisees who didn't believe he was who he said he was, God's son, the light shining in the darkness, the way, the truth and the life. The powerful religious leaders didn't recognise the perfect, sinless saviour that was central to their religious writings. They didn't want to know this nobody from Nazareth who claimed to be the saviour they were all waiting for. So they did away with him. What a scandal. However, here they were, God-fearing Jews, coming from far and wide to this Jewish festival, which we now call Pentecost. They came from throughout the known world, no less, to commemorate the first fruits, the end of the harvest, and some believe to celebrate the anniversary of receiving the law that God gave to Moses. They were completely unaware that the first fruit from the Passover had risen from the grave, ascended to heaven, and his followers were gathered nearby, waiting as instructed to receive a gift. The Jews were bringing their gifts of their best grain offerings made into loaves that were waved by the priest before the Lord. They brought lambs and bulls as instructed in Leviticus 23. They decorated their homes and synagogues and they ate food specially made with dairy and honey to express their dependence on God and their trust that he would continue to provide for them if they kept the law that they, that they depended on for their salvation. They were on the whole good people, leaving the edges of the fields and the leftover crops for the poor and the immigrants according to God's instructions. It was a happy occasion where scriptures were read out and people remembered their traditions. I should imagine that they put on their Sabbath, best Sabbath garments too and danced and made merry. Maybe the inns were full and doing a roaring trade like the black horse in Kingswood. But what's the relevance of Pentecost? The day of Pentecost is referenced, as I said, to 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus or seven days Sundays after Easter. Acts 1 records that 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven after telling his followers, 120 men and women, to stay in Jerusalem, to pray and wait for God to send the Holy Spirit. Note that Jesus didn't say how long they would have to wait. They were no doubt still somewhat afraid of what had happened to Jesus and that that would happen to them. So they went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives to the upper room where they were staying. They were earnest in prayer, pleading day and night, interceding. They sat in, still in confident expectation. Sometimes we ask for things, but we don't expect to receive it. We're almost surprised when our prayers are answered. For 10 days, they waited and prayed and prayed and waited for the promised Holy Spirit. And then it happened. On day 50, when the day of Pentecost came, there was a sound like the blowing of a violent, rushing, mighty wind from heaven that filled the whole house where they were staying. If any of them had be begun to get a bit sleepy with all that waiting and praying, I would imagine that the loud noise woke them up big time and got their full attention. The work and person of the Holy Spirit wasn't strange to them. They'd seen him at work in the ministry of Jesus and had experienced the power of the Holy Spirit whilst they were with Jesus. In Luke 10, Jesus sent out 72 of his followers who experienced the demons submitting to them in Jesus name. John 20, 22 tells us that the resurrected Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. They had received the Holy Spirit when Jesus finished his work on the cross and established the new covenant in his blood. But this was different. They were waiting for something unusual 
and this was certainly unusual. This was the Holy Spirit coming in a new way. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit rested on men and women for a while, but he didn't live or dwell there. He lived in the tabernacle in the Holy of Holies, where a veil separated him from the priest, who was only allowed to go in once a year and represent all of God's people. In John 14, 15 to 18, Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit to live with them and in them. This is what they were waiting for. Within the church, there's often confusion when we talk about the Holy Spirit. It's fair to say that the Holy Spirit is probably one of the most contentious issues within the Christian church. What is the Holy Spirit? When do we as Christians receive the Holy Spirit, if at all? What are the signs of the Holy Spirit? What are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Is the baptism in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues? The Holy Spirit is sometimes associated with a certain type of charismatic worship where hands are raised and we all shout out and lay hands on people and they fall on the floor under his power, etc. This has put some people off. And some people, some Christians, live their lives as though there isn't any Holy Spirit at all. But the Apostle Paul is quite clear. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to, to idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works, of, works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith. To another, gifts of healing to another miraculous powers, and to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, and to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. We tend to think of the Holy Spirit as being given to us only as individuals. And we forget that in Acts 2, this group of apostles and followers of Jesus were of one accord, the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit filled the whole house, not just the room. The sign of the Holy Spirit is unity, not taking offence, humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God and persevering together. Not just signs and wonders, but the hard everyday submission to the Lord and to one another, and a willingness to serve as Jesus did. This is when God says that he can command his blessing. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. And they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. All those festival goers, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, who came from far and wide to celebrate Shavuot, heard the followers of Jesus declaring the wonders of God in their own language. They were utterly amazed. They said, aren't these men Galileans? I take it that that wasn't a term of endearment in those days, but some kind of insult. In any case, I don't suppose that they would be expected to have the means to learn 15 or so different languages. It is said that in those days, people from Galilee were known for their illiteracy and poverty. Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee. 
John 1, 46 records Nathanael's derogatory response when Philip wanted to introduce him to Jesus. Nazareth, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Although three, uh, three verses later, it didn't really take long for him to declare, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Amazed, bewildered and perplexed are the words used to describe their response to what they heard. What does this mean? They asked. God promised back in Joel 2.28 to pour out his spirit on all people, on your sons and your daughters, young men and old men, men and women. There is no differentiation in God's kingdom. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They will prophesy, they will preach, they will serve, they will lead. Romans 12, 6 to 8. When we take the message of the gospel out into our communities, we don't have to be qualified according to men's standards. The Holy Spirit enables us to share the gospel with everyone we meet. He fills us with passion for the good news of Jesus and puts a fire in our hearts that burns like nothing else. We want to tell people about God and what he's done for us and how good he is. Those who recognise that without God they can do nothing can do everything with the power of the Holy Spirit. The real sign of the Holy Spirit in the church is that we can still love and worship God together even if we have different views. We have a common assignment from God to go and reach the lost with the message of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. We are called to be one body in him. Galatians 3.28 says, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Let's not overcomplicate the Holy Spirit. The miracle of Pentecost is that the church was able to speak the good news in a way that everyone could understand. They were filled with a power and a passion for God that overcame their fear. He brought unity among the followers of Jesus, such as the, the church was formed. The Holy Spirit came just as Jesus promised at the appointed time and the Great Commission was taken forward in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, including here. This group of Jesus followers in Acts 2 should be our role models. They began the mission that is still as relevant today as it was then. Some, however, made fun of them and thought they were drunk. Um, I, f I found uh, this, um, this little thing, it says, to escape the absurdity of acknowledging their own ignorance, they adopted the theory that strong drink can teach languages. Well, if that was true, I, I would be very happy because I'd quite like to have a couple of gin and tonics and be able, or a couple of glasses of wine and be able to speak French, wouldn't you? But that's what they were saying. They must be drunk. They were speaking in all these different languages. People often mock things they don't understand rather than bothering to investigate. They don't want to hear anything or anyone that will change their status quo. Maybe fear of the unknown led them to make fun of what they saw and heard. Or maybe they just wanted to suggest a reason that would sound rational or be accepted as rational. Charles Spurgeon said, However great a miracle is, there will always be those who speak evil against it. When people can't rationalise things to fit their own frame of reference, they will often try to refute it or bring a reproach against it. That's human nature. Jesus said, forgive them, they know not what they do. Others, however, believed. Some were cut to the heart by what they saw and heard from Peter, who addressed the crowd, they asked, what shall we do? And the answer is the same today. Repent 
and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the, Holy, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. He pleaded and warned them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And about 3,000 people responded to Peter's message that day and were baptised. When the Holy Spirit comes, some don't believe. Some think it's just mere excitement. Some just ignore it and shut their eyes altogether. Some make fun of it and mock, and others believe and respond, are baptised and receive the Holy Spirit. It is time to call on the Lord for salvation from sin. Today is the day of salvation. He does not, will not, and cannot change. Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through him. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. In this passage of scripture, there are three groups of people responding to the dramatic outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The apostles and followers of Jesus, who were waiting and praying with confident assurance until the Holy Spirit came. There were the Jews who had come to celebrate the festival in Jerusalem, who witnessed the power of the Holy Spirit on his followers and their amazement led them to believe and be baptised. And then there were the mockers who did not want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, who did not want their lives changed, who were happy worshipping their idols. They just laughed and shrugged their shoulders and walked away. Where do you see yourself? Can you see through the transient pleasures that this life offers and recognise the corrupt generation that we are living in today that kills and robs and destroys our faith in God and one another? Do you want the power of the Holy Spirit to live with you and in you as was demonstrated at that first Pentecost? Or will you crush his voice with denial and mockery? Only by choosing to believe and follow Jesus Christ, the living God, will you receive his gift of the Holy Spirit. Please, if you hear his voice today, choose life. Revelation 22, 12 to 17 says, Behold, I am coming soon. I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they might have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates to the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life, which is the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? If you today feel that you have, you have felt um, a tugging in your heart, a, a small voice or a loud voice in your spirit to respond to God this morning, to the Holy Spirit this morning, then please pray this prayer with me. Lord God, I recognise in my inner being the voice of your spirit. My soul cries out to you for forgiveness and salvation from this corrupt generation. I believe that you are who you say you are and that you shed your blood as a sacrifice for my sin. I offer my life to the service of your kingdom 
and ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit to give me the power to do this. I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs. Well, it's come to the end of our time together. You can see that Sue's still here. She didn't get the bus. Um, and I'm really glad that she didn't get the bus because I'm going to be taking her home later. Um, and it's also great that this is here. Uh, Sue mentioned about the church. You know, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Not only do we welcome people, but we welcome the Holy Spirit and we want his ministry uh, in our fellowship. And we are so desperate, like thirsty people looking for fresh water. Um, so that's, uh, that's for that. Um, we, if you come on Sunday, you might see the cake. We just want to say thank you for being with us and um, uh, how amazing uh, you are and how amazing, of course, who uh, God is on this very special day when we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. And um, isn't it amazing that God has kept his church so vibrant and alive and so full of joy and full of unity in the Holy Spirit um, through all of those years that Sue has been talking about. And uh, we're still here, uh, worshipping the Lord together, um, attempting to be, because we're not perfect, attempting to be a family uh, that lives under God's almighty hand. So thanks for joining with us today. We really appreciate it. And we pray that you'll be really blessed. Yeah, thanks to Kim too for sharing that message with us. That's amazing. Um, as always, there are resources on our website if you want to know more about the church, more about Jesus, more about faith, just have a look there and contact us. If there's anything you'd like to chat through, uh, we're more than happy to chat, to pray. Uh, we're here to serve you and to serve the church, to serve Jesus. Uh, what was I gonna say next? I know if you'd like to come in person next Sunday, Andy said the cake would be here, it won't, because we'll have eaten it. Um, if you'd like to come <laughs> next Sunday, then please don't forget you need to book a seat so that we're all, um, safe in the building and we've got a service this Thursday coming up as well at 10.30. You're more than welcome to join us there. So don't forget this, welcome. Like Andy said, you're welcome. The Holy Spirit is very welcome to meet with us always too. Uh, anything else? Have I forgotten anything? I think we're going to pray. I think we're going to pray, absolutely. You want to start us off? Yeah. Holy Spirit, thank you that uh, you've been here with us. Thank you that we've known your presence as we listened to God's word. Thank you that we've uh, known your presence in our spirit, uh, in, our, in our inner being, we've known your presence with us. And thank you that you give us power, you uh, help us to be effective in our witness to Jesus. So Holy Spirit, I want to ask that if there are people this morning who are thirsty for more of you, that they would seek you, they'd reach out and that you would fill them to overflowing with your power, with your love, that they might serve you. And if you uh, maybe think this morning that uh, you're going to be one of those people that sort of push the Holy Spirit to one side and yet you've been, your interest has been piqued in some way, then uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so Lord, we pray that your life and your goodness and your blessing would rest upon people, uh, the people who are watching this. Uh, the people who are part of our families, that you would draw people to yourself, uh, Lord, in our families, those perhaps, Lord, who need a, a touch from you, 
uh, either in healing or in restoration. And uh, Lord, that you would draw those people who once knew you back to yourself again. So we want to say thank you. And we, we welcome every ministry that the Holy Spirit brings uh, into our fellowship together. Thank you, Lord. Bless us as we uh, go into this week and uh, sense and feel your presence uh, with us in every circumstance and situation. And we give you all the glory and the honour in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our service isn't quite over yet oh, I was just because we've got that. a special surprise for you. If you were with us last year, you'll know that we had a great video that we watched that uh, was a surprise to us all. And we're going to watch it again now. So thank you, Morris family, for putting this together for us last year. I'm sure you won't believe that a whole year has gone past, but we're going to watch this ACE video. And uh, then I think we've got a song and then the service will be over. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye bye. Hello everyone from the Morris family. What a beautiful Sunday morning it is. We hope you're all well. Um, so Pentecost is celebrated the seventh Sunday after Easter, a day of Pentecost festival, a prominent feast in the calendar of ancient Israel. Um, it's the Jewish feast of weeks. Hundreds of people gathered in Jerusalem for the harvest and the feast, but the disciples were nowhere to be seen. Emily, Kaya, T and Riley and Phoebe will explain more. This is where we are in our story. God made a perfect world. People messed it up. But God had a plan to rescue them. He sent his son Jesus to save everyone. So we could be with him. And to save us, Jesus oh, had to beat death. After he did that, he went to heaven. But first, he told his friends, the disciples. To rape. He was going to send them a gift, the Holy Spirit. So they waited. Even though there was a giant party going on outside, which was called Pentecost. <laughs> the disciples stayed together. Inside. Waiting. There was a loud noise. Like a really strong wind. <laughs> then fire came down from heaven and landed on top of people's heads. It isn't like the fire where you still, it didn't burn them. This fire was way cooler. The disciples started speaking different languages. Languages they didn't even know. They spoke Greek. Hebrew. Hebrew. Arabic. All sorts of languages. It was a miracle! <gasps> the disciples knew it was a special day. Anyone who believes in Jesus has the Holy Spirit. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. God had given them the Holy Spirit. And we can have the Holy Spirit too.
Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Your church, we need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, we refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts release, the hurt, the sick, the poor. Streets and land, set your church.